Randy Thompson with the Horse and Rider Awareness Do-It-Yourself Transitions. Today we're focusing on the rider's lower leg position. This is a problem that most riders have is to how can they keep their leg stretched down where their weight is in the back of their calf and their weight is in their heel as they're riding and doing the whatever process they're doing and in fact whatever style of riding they're doing. This seems to be a problem that just about every rider I can think of has got issues with. And so today, you're going to watch Allie on Chapa. Now you'll notice when we first start, she's going to have a very happy look on her face and look very relaxed. By the time we finished, she's going to be tired because we are going to readjust her lower leg position so it's more effective on a horse and of course, where it looks better. Come on in and join us as once again, we work with Allie and Chapa on the rider's lower leg position. All right. So, uh, Alex, what did you, as we've been moving your leg position around a little bit where you could start feeling where your leg actually should be on his rib cage, what, what do you feel? Well, I feel that without my stirrup and walking him, it is right around here, right? Yes. And when I put my stirrup back on, I feel like I'm riding behind my the spot. That's right. So your tendency is to actually put your legs behind the sweet spot where your leg gets held onto a horse. And you feel it when it slides way back. That's yeah. when your upper body tips forward. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, now that you feel it. Yeah. It's a pretty big feeling once you feel it, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to isolate uh, Alex's feeling again as to where the two-point or half seat should be. So, Alex, this time when you go up in your upward position, which would be a rising trot position or a posting trot position. I want you to only go as high as it takes for your knee to start going down. That's all the higher you need to go. Okay. Hold on. Right there. Uh-huh. How does that feel? Low. Oh, you've lowered your center of gravity. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's low. That's right. Okay. You can sit again, go for a walk. Let's walk. Good. All right, now I'd like you to do the same thing. You're going to rise to the walk and feel, just simply feel when you feel your knee coming down. Right there. That's right, that's all the higher you need to go with your seat. If you go higher than that, you're going to disconnect your center of balance from your horses and that's where you'll lose your balance for doing the jumpers or dressage. It's relearning how to post. That's right, it is. It is. It's relearning how to post or rise the trot and how to keep your body. As you said, you can feel that your center of balance is a lot lower now. Yeah. Now feel that sweet spot on his rib cage to make sure your lower leg is underneath of you where it needs to be right now, too. Okay, hold on. I that. That's all right. It's a lot of things to do at one time. And Alex, you are such a good demonstration rider to allow us to do this to you. Oh, what are you feeling now? That's right. Yes, you're much more balanced. You don't rise as high because the higher you rise, the more likely you are to rise right off that saddle. <laughs> it's like my, my, my knee, it pushes down quicker. That's right. And it anchors you right into your lower leg, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Okay, now try this at the rising posting trot. Okay. And take your time because at first you're going to feel yourself bobble all over the place. And that's normal. Again, it takes a thousand times to change anything. And most riders have been doing this habit for most of their lives. And again, what we're really working on is the lower leg, by the way. Oh, it's changing your rising trot, isn't it? Yeah, I still have the tendency to go higher, though. Oh, that's all right, because it takes practice. At first, most people do rise higher, by the way. I feel like I go in with my second part of the body, I guess, forwards. Oh, good. With your belly? Good, that's exactly correct. When you're rising the trot, you should feel like your hips are coming through your elbows. Uh, okay. Which is different than going up and down. Yeah, so you find it keeps you lower. What this will also do is by learning how to use this is you'll be able to lengthen your horse's stride or shortening it with your posting rising trot movement. Let me stop back again. 
All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have Alex go into a canter and what you're going to see is what most riders do is the first step into the canter they tend to uh, their heels come up and they disconnect their upper body from their lower body type of thing. Oh that was nice. How does that feel? Now feel that sweet spot on his belly. Can you feel it? It's much easier at the canter though. Oh yes it's easier at the canter. That's it. Okay now do your half seat position. Oh, that's, so easy. that's it. You take your time. Uh, smaller circles are neuter him. He's still learning how to do this. So uh, that's it. And again, we're not working on the horse. That's it. You feel your balance? Yeah. All right. Now rise. Sit two. Rise one at the canter. Press on his neck for your balance. Oh. Oh. What are you feeling? I feel I'm going forward. That's right. You can feel where your balance isn't always where you thought it was. I thought it was actually pretty much better balance than the canter. Oh, yeah. Everybody does until they do this exercise. And what it's doing now is it's isolating what you're really doing in the canter work that can be affecting your horse when you're jumping or doing transitions or anything like that. Because unless the rider's body is secure, the horse can't really balance as well as they can either. Oh, that's it. You're starting to get a different feeling of it now, aren't you? Yeah. I just have to keep my legs in the right spot. Oh, you have to keep your leg in the right spot? Yeah, it's not easy though. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> nice. Oh, what does it teach you about what you've been doing for your canter work? Yeah, I wasn't working either. Oh, uh, you were working. You were doing the best you could with where you're at, but this is going to isolate it even more. You're doing such a nice job. I think you should try rising two and sitting one now. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. There you go. <laughs> oh. Yes, because you can see what you normally do in your two-point position when you're coming up to a fence now, can't you? Yes. You feel where you fall forward and backwards? Yeah. It's very nice. I feel on right, getting two up and one down. It's like I still, I still touch my saddle and why not stay in one more stride? That's right. There. Yeah, and you can feel where you drop it now, can't you? Oh, yeah. Of course, the, the other side is harder, so let's try going to the left now. Again, as you watch the transition, what happened to her lower leg? And this happens with everybody. It's not only Alex. You may not even know you're doing it unless you can get somebody to videotape you. Good. And this can make a difference, especially if you're showing in equitation classes or anything like that where you're being judged on the way that you actually uh, use your riding position. It'll really give a deep seat in that look. Good. Okay, now sit two, rise one. Feels different going to the left, doesn't it? Yes. Is your left leg whining yet? Oh, no. oh, you are, though. Yes. <laughs> so most people going to the left are going to have a harder time simply because you have to keep your left hip over your left leg to do this. And most riders don't keep their left hip over their left leg while they're riding. It's all right. We don't care what he's doing underneath of you because we're focused on you right now. Oh, it really makes you have to put your weight over your left leg different, doesn't it? Much more. Oh, yes, yes, that's all right. He's going to do all kinds of things. So will your horses at home. There's nothing that anybody's doing wrong. We're just changing the position of the rider so that the horse can balance better. So, Alex, tell me what you were feeling as we were doing this exercise. Besides the excruciating pain. No. Oh, she's... <laughs> It's it not was, really that painful, but you no. really notice it. No, you actually do. No, it's not that painful, though. It's just it makes you work harder than you actually think you're going to be working harder. That's right. And uh, it gets here on um, muscle-wise. What I've been feeling is this one up in here. And this muscle here is the muscle that it helps me not to flop back That's right. on my saddle. So this muscle is getting work on, too. Yes. And uh, even you believe it or not, it is. <laughs> I know. And on the left, which is our um, offside, I, I didn't feel that much to the right. I don't know why. Because your left leg is weaker, and most people's are. Okay. So you won't feel it as much to the right because your right leg is used to balancing your body. Okay. But your left leg whines a lot. But everybody's does.